Dr. Sanjeev, welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. How are you today? I am doing excellent, Melissa. I hope you are doing fine as well. I am. So far, so good. So can't ask for more than that, right? Yes, definitely. So Dr. Sanjeev, you have a, quite a few accomplishments. First, you're a pharmacist. And second... You've got another thing going on in life that you're going to share with us about. So what would you like us to know about you as we begin today? Uh, that's a very, you know, broad question. I have so many things which is going on right now. And, uh, you know, I'm happy the way that trajectory of my life has taken. Uh, right now, you know, I'm working on my app which is called Novo. Uh, it's a free app for health and wellness. And anybody, you know, anywhere in the world can download it for free. And it's in the Google Play Store and App Play Store. And the whole point of making the app is to give the users a platform where they can, you know, improve their health and wellness and we have implemented a lot of things in that app. Like we have a section for meditation. And just to clarify the myth that, okay, meditation is related to religion. It has nothing to do with religion. Meditation is basically a form of exercise. You know, form to have a better concentration of your mind. So that you can improve your focus because, you know, you can be a scientist, you can be a professor, you can be a teacher. We all need, you know, focus and concentration to accomplish our time. And when we were young, like, you know, when we go to school, nobody teaches us how to concentrate or how to focus. So basically meditation is a tool to improve your focus and concentration. And we have implemented that in our app so that you can improve your, you know, focus and concentration and get better in your life. The second part which we have implemented in our app is the exercise. Like, you know, when we were born, we were gatherers and hunters. You know, we are not meant to sit in a desk and do our job. We have to walk, we have to run. We have to do different physical activity to keep this body in optimum health. And, you know, what our app will do is it will count the number of steps you are taking it in the whole day. So, again, you know, exercise is an important part of our life. And if we are doing exercise, you know, there are different benefits of exercise. There is a lot of literature. And there's a literature in Harvard University that if you are only walking, it decreases your cardiovascular disease by 50%, which is a huge number. And the third section which we have implemented is water intake. As, you know, human beings, as, you know, specifically me, you know, we live in cold countries. And, you know, I, I refer to myself as a camel to my son because I drink very less water. And because of the cold, we don't drink, you know, much water. But our body and brain is made up of 70% water. If we are not drinking enough water, it can lead to depression and anxiety. Mm. So the third section is about, you know, the apps will remind you about, you know, to take your water intake. You know, every two or three hours so that, you know, you are reminded by something that, you know, keep your water intake in spite of, you know, being outside, you know, old or even in spite of you don't remember. And the fourth thing which we have uh, implemented is sleep analysis. Like sleep is something which we all need. Like, you know, it's essential without, you know, good restful sleep. 
you cannot function the next day. You know, it's only, even if you don't sleep one night, it can disrupt your whole day. So, you know, that app will analyze your light sleep, you know, deep sleep, REM sleep. And uh, as you are aware that, you know, we, when we sleep, you know, there are different things which is happening in our brain. And, uh, you know, like, you know, the oxygen supply, you know, when you are sleeping, your body, you know, your brain needs oxygen. And uh, when you're sleeping, all the waste material, which is in the brain, is kind of, you know, excreted by the cerebral spinal fluid so that, you know, your, whatever the waste material is there comes out of the brain when you sleep. So it's, and, you know, sometimes hard for the human being to figure, you know, you, everything is working fine. You go to bed and the next day you wake up in the morning and you're drunk. What is the reason you're drunk? Nobody knows it, but, you know, there are different things which are happening in your brain. And our brain is so complicated that we know very little about this brain. You know, we are able to do a lot of progress in the last two decades, but still brain is such a complicated thing that we have just touched the surface of the brain. So, you know, the sleep analysis is one of the part in the app. Then, you know, gratitude is one of the most important thing which makes us happy. Mm. So we do have a section, you know, where you can write what you are grateful for today. Because every day is different. You know, you might be grateful for your family. You might be grateful for your son. You might be grateful that you woke up today because there are so many people who did not woke up today. Which is definitely better than seeing the negative, you know, things which is happening in our life. So, so it's, it's a habit of cultivating, you know, what we are grateful for, you know, like, like, you know, giving example of my life, you know, I always used to see, you know, what is negative happening in my life rather than seeing the positive. And that's how every human being is wired. We always see the negative side. We never see, you know, what is good happening in our world. But there are so many things we are grateful for. Most of the human being, Malaysia, is happy with 90% of their life. Most of the people. But what we, you know, take is the 10% which we are not happy with. We pick up those 10%. Okay, you know, I'm not happy with this thing. But why don't you see that 90% you are happy? So, you know, gratitude is something you can build on. So that is one of the section in, in the act. Then we have most checks, like, you know, how you're feeling today, whether you are in a good mood, you are sad, we are angry. We go through different emotions, uh, you know, in a day, even if it is not all the emotions, you know, some of the emotions. And uh, again, you know, it's, it's about uh, analyzing, okay, what kind of mood you are going through, because you cannot be happy all the time. Means I don't want to sugarcoat anything. You know, I wanted to say, you know, what I feel about. Because it's hard for a human being to be happy all the time. If somebody is saying, you know, I'm happy all the time, he's lying. <laughs> I can tell you that. So it's, it's kind of, you know, cultivating the habits which makes happy. And, you know, as long as you can make your, your life, you know, 80% happy, you are in a good you know, I have to agree with you that gratitude really refocuses us on what is present in our lives and what is good. It takes away our focus from mourning over what's missing or worrying about what's not there. And that one practice of being grateful, that gratitude practice really focuses us on what is really present to us. And so often, we take those things for granted and it can make such a difference in our lives. But I really love as a spiritual leader, the incorporation of the spiritual health meditation with the physical aspects of health, getting enough sleep, drinking water, moving our bodies. And again, that other spiritual aspect of being grateful. 
I love that holistic approach. That's one of my biggest things that I talk about in life is we are spiritual beings. Whether or not we're religious, we are spiritual beings. And it's vital to tend to our spiritual health because it has ramifications in our physical health. And I love that you being a pharmacist, a scientist, someone with a background in that physicality of our bodies is also telling us it's important to meditate. It's important to practice gratitude because it all goes together. And folks, if you want this app, and you do, believe me, I downloaded it earlier this morning and was fooling around with it to the point where I was almost late to this interview today. But the app is called Luvo, L-U-V-O, and there's a link to it in the show notes. It's available for Android and Apple. Make sure you check that app out. Install it on your phone. And, you know, I have to hand it to you. I have apps for meditation. I have apps on my phone for fitness and movement, but I love that you've incorporated these all in one place. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And there are about 45 different directions I want to go in this podcast, but alas, wisdom says, let's just pick one or two and go from there. So I want to talk about the difference that meditation can make in our lives, if that's all right with you. Yes, definitely. And meditation um, in certain traditions is called centering prayer, but it's simply just quieting your mind and your body and your soul and just being present in the moment. So call it whatever you will, but it's uh, such a healthy addition to your lives. So tell us how that can change us, if you would. So... Let me, you know, start with a story, you know, why did I start in meditation? So, you know, I was struggling in my life from 2013 to 2016. And I don't know what to do with my life. You know, I was filled with fear, anger, resentment. And uh, every passing day, I was drowning more and more. Mm-hmm. And I was on and off that journey for three or four years. And by 2016, I realized that, you know, I was thinking deeper and deeper in these negative emotions and I have to do something. And I hit the rock bottom, or you can say the nadir of my life, the deepest level or the deepest point, you know, any human being can be. So I can, you know, understand or I can connect with different, you know, people. Because, you know, you can only understand the feelings of other people when you have seen yourself and you have taken that journey. And, you know, I know that so many people are struggling in this life, you know, because of financial issues. It can be relationship issues. You know, there are different issues which, you know, everybody has to face. And, and you know, once I have gone that, uh, my mind is full in different directions. And because of that, you know, restless mind, or you can say monkey mind, I thought, you know, I have to, you know, take control of this mind. Hmm. So as I came from, you know, India, or you can say the Eastern culture, where it is called meditation. So I thought, you know, if my mind is so much restless, why don't I try meditation? And in the Western culture, you can say, you know, mindfulness, and just to clarify it, like, you know, my mom never meditates. She never do any kind of uh, mindfulness, but she used to pray. And praying is, again, a form of meditation. So it's not that, you know, this is not related. You know, everything is related. You know, meditation has, I will not say that it's kind of uh, related to religion, as I mentioned it. It's about, you know, centering your mind and have, you know, Peace and equanimity in, in the brain so that you can think clearly. Because, you know, I have, uh, you know, trying to find out what is the scientific reason, you know, how, why does our brain, you know, works in different directions? Because the role of the brain has two things it is to keep yourself safe 
And the second thing is, you know, it, it was to conserve energy. And by default, by default, we always think negative. So, so in control of this monkey mind, we have to implement something in our life. You know, you can take, you know, prayer. And if you can do prayer every single day, which is, you know, which is fine. You have to choose what is good for you. You know, I chose meditation because, you know, I thought, okay, oh, this is going to help. And meditation is kind of, you know, you concentrate on an object, place, thing, or just on your breath. And why people say breath? Because it is always present that you have to go anywhere to find your breath. And if you are concentrating on, on your breath, you're not thinking about any negative things. So once I started doing meditation, I found that I'm less, you know, reactive. Uh, my focus was getting better. And then I started diving deep into the scientific reason. Okay, what is happening in my brain? Because, you know, something is definitely happening, which is keeping me, myself calmer and less reactive. And I find out that when you are meditating, there is a structure in our brain, which is called amygdala, which is the fight or the flight response. Sure. That eight weeks of meditation decreases the size of amygdala, which is the fear thing. And once you are less fear, it means, you know, you are more in a state of calm and relaxed state. You are not in a flight of flight mode. And it has been scientifically proven by Sarah Lazar, who is a neuroscientist in Harvard Medical College. The second thing, you know, what meditation does is either we are left brainers or right brain. Either, or, you know, it's the same thing, like either we write, write with left hand or the right hand. You cannot write with both hands. But imagine if you are able to write with both hands. And now imagine if you can use, you know, both your brains, you know, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere and become whole brain. Hmm. So it means, you know, left-sided, left-sided people are more analytical, logical, more good at reasoning part. And the right side brain are more good at philosophy and how. And what meditation does, it, it increases the thickness or the joining between the left hemisphere and the light, uh, right hemisphere, and you become whole brain. Once you become whole brainers, you know, your thinking, clarity, you know, everything improves. Your, your mental clarity becomes, you know, optimal. So, you know, these are the benefits which, you know, which I found after reading that there are so many other benefits, like meditator sleeps like long. You know, I never had a problem and, you know, I go to bed 30 seconds and sleep. I never go <laughs> in the night time. And, you know, there are so many other benefits. Like, you know, it releases endorphins, you know, difference in dopamine, you know, our brain, which makes it happen. So seeing these benefits, you know, I started doing more and more. And, uh, you know, it has definitely impacted my life. And, and, and I will definitely tell you users too. Do some kind of, you know, mental training. It can be prayer. As I tell, you know, my mom never um, did meditation, but she used to pray every single day. So if you can pray every single day, because you cannot go to, you know, church every single day, but if you can pray at home, even if, if it is for 10 or 15 minutes, it will be very helpful. Yeah. That's fantastic. And I love how you can start small with meditation. You can start with just three to five minutes and set a timer if you need to. But that three to five minutes can really begin to make changes in you. And it's not like a switch is flipped. It takes time. After a few, after a couple of weeks or so, you're going to start seeing some differences in yourself, just meditating for a few minutes each day. And then in my experience, you start craving a little more and a little more. And you find that place of balance. You find the amount that works for you. And it makes such a difference. Yes, definitely. You know, as you say, you know, 
you are for more, you know, same thing happens for me. So that's the reason I was kind of laughing, you know, like I am now addicted to meditation. Like, you know, when I woke up, you know, I have to do it, you know, like kind of become a habit before I go to bed, you know, I have to do meditation for, you know, at least five or 10 minutes. It is, you know, such a routine. It is such a habit that I cannot skip it. And, and why I do it, because I see the benefits what it has given to me. Because once you see the benefits, and that's the reason most of the people don't do it because then it takes time and it's not tangible. Like you cannot measure it. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot measure something, you know, it, it becomes harder for people to stick to it. But again, you know, as it, it has a compounding effect, like, you know, keep the money in the bank, you know, after, you know, few years, you will see that compounding effect, you know, same thing with the meditation, same thing with exercise and same thing with any other things you want to improve your life. Like if you wanted to become a good speaker, you know, just practice three to five minutes every single day. In a year, you will see, you know, how much improvement you have done in a course of time. Like, you know, when I started, you know, my journey of becoming a speaker, I used to family, but, you know, I still, you know, become, you know, persistent and I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. And over the course of time, I'm able to improve myself. Definitely, you know, I'm not able to go where I wanted to go because, you know, life is all about improving yourself. There is no end point. Because you know, if there is an end point, you know, once you reach that goal, then again, what happens, you have to find something to do in your life. You cannot say, okay, you know, this is my goal. And once I finish this, that's the game plan that, you know, the life doesn't end there. You have to find something again, you know, in your life so that you keep progressing. You have to always look forward to something in your life. Yeah. And one thing I, you know, just wanted to mention it, that, you know, life is not about competing with somebody else. Any human being in the United States can definitely speak much better English than what I speak. But my competition is not with you or not with anybody else. My competition is, you know, can I become better than who I was yesterday? And that makes me happy. Absolutely. Now, before we end today, I want to talk about your book because I love the title, The Man with Zero Talent. <laughs> That's the name of your book. and. I want to buy it just because of the title. Tell us what inspired this book and a little bit of what it's about. So, you know, when I started my self-transformation journey in 2017, you know, I don't know what to do. So I started implementing meditation. Then, you know, I started implementing, you know, exercise. I started walking, which eventually led me to run my first half marathon and my first uh, full marathon. And then I started implementing, you know, course hours in my regular routine. And this mind and body are not different entities. It's kind of, you know, interrelated to each other. So I started eating slowly. Because, you know, what I put inside my mouth, you know, is what it is, you know, giving to my brain at the same time. If I'm putting, you know, junk in my body, it is going to make me lethargic and, you know, my energy level will get. So I have to, you know, put the best fuel, you can say, in my body so that, you know, my body and mind is working in an optimal condition. So I started, you know, working on my eating habits and, um, you know, I did extensive research about meditation, exercise, cold showers, you know, how to eat healthy and uh, which uh, led me to find, okay, what is about the emotional intelligence? Because, you know, again, we are going to different kinds of emotion and how we can take better control of this brain. Because our brain is, uh, means only three pounds, which is, you know, 2% of our body weight, yet it consumes 25% of the energy. 
Now, let it, when it is consuming 25% of the energy, by default, the role of the brain is to conserve energy. And if I, if I want it to do something or accomplish something in my life, it means, you know, I have to work hard. So what I have to do is, is you know, I have to become the captain of this world. Otherwise, the mind is going to control my life. So the is about self-transformation, you know, what I have done in my life to change myself. And I wanted to give a clear-cut roadmap to anybody who needs it, because it took me three years to, you know, kind of refine my life. And if somebody is re reading this book, you know, it will give them a shortcut. If you know these things, it will improve your life in six to eight weeks, rather than spending three years. So, so, you know, it's kind of, you know, to help the users or the leaders that, you know, this is the thing so which you can do with it. And it's not about, uh, you know, it's not about a story of a man. It's about, you know, any individual who is, a, who is from the age of 16 to 75 years old, they can read it. It will help them how to become a positive human being. Because by default, we are negative and, you know, we have to cultivate the habit of positivity. And once you have implemented the habit of positivity, how to become a better version of ourselves? Because in every human being wants to be better in their life. Because if you're not making yourself better, you're not progressing. And if you're not progressing, you cannot be happy in your life. You have to always what on yourself, you know, that is the thing which is in your hand. You cannot control all the circumstances which is happening in your life, but you can definitely control what is happening inside me, what I can control about my health. I cannot control, you know, when it is going to rain or when it is going to snow, it is outside, you know, and it's very control. But I can definitely control, okay, how, what I am going to wake and what I'm going to do after I wake up so that, you know, I can keep myself happy. And happy. Perfect. And what a way to live. I would much rather be happy and healthy than any other way. So thank you, Dr. Sanjeev, for joining us today. And folks, I encourage you to click the link to see his website, check out the app. There's a lot of information there on the website about the app, but also about life in general. And of course, get your copy of the book. So thank you again for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me in your show.